So Nintendo is making a rhythm-based Zelda game with Cadence of Hyrule, combining the lands of The Legend of Zelda with the indie realm of the Crypt of the Necrodancer, and I actually kind of forgot it was coming out, I realised that it was released in like trailers like two months ago, but I believe if this is timed out nicely, then the day after this video comes out will be the four year anniversary of the original Crypt of the Necrodancer being released. And I really wanted to talk about this game, it's something I was really excited about when I did see the trailer, even though I forgot about it, and I've got like a billion ideas of the potential they could make with this whole idea. It's already exciting enough that Nintendo has officially combined with an indie game to make a new Zelda game, but there's still lots of room for what they could do. You can already tell that this game is going to be full of references, and there's just so many different possibilities for what they could do. We haven't seen too much, there hasn't really been much word on it since the trailer came out, and even though it will be releasing soon and we'll probably see a trailer even sooner, I have a billion ideas that I just kind of wanted to jot down, though admittedly I haven't actually played Crypto of Crypto? I haven't played Crypt of the Necrodancer, nor have I really played Link to the Past, which is what the game is mostly based on, but I did do a whole bunch of research on both of them, and I'm going to try and bring those two together the most, but I've got all sorts of Zelda ideas they could potentially put in the game, which we may very well see. First off, let's talk about the characters. We know about three of them officially, but Crypt actually has many different characters. Again, in the original game, there was a base of three characters, but then there were also seven extra ones on top of that. And in the DLC, there was an extra main one, and then another three after that, and then another one on the Switch version of the game. Now, since this game is mostly based on Link to the Past, a few characters I thought we could actually see is, for example, Link's uncle. He's very much an unnamed uncle character, but Crypt also goes into going into Cadence's ancestors, so it could very well be that kind of prequel element, or at least some sort of spin-off idea of how they would interact. You could also have, although it's a little less cemented, the loyal sage you find in the sanctuary, who sends you off on your way. You've got Sahasrala, a pretty iconic sage character. There's Aginha, another sage character, or even, although a bit of a stretch, the lost old man who gives you the magic mirror and helps you along your journey. These are all very small scale characters, but they could go somewhere, it at least stays within the realms of Link to the Past. And how characters work in Crypt of the Necrodancer is they each come, a lot of the times, with different starting items as well as all sorts of gimmicks. Some examples in the original game was one character had no beat to move to, but instead the enemies were in sync with the character. Another one, I think one of the monk characters, dies upon grabbing any kind of gold, because they're not a greedy type. There was even another one who couldn't attack at all, but could only confuse enemies and teleport them away. Another one had infinite bombs and could kick the bombs towards enemies. Another one had double speed for extra challenge. Some could move diagonally, others couldn't throw. One of them even had infinite damage, but they had a constant countdown to their death for 16 beats that would then refresh every time they killed an enemy or something like that. And the most recent one, the Reaper from the Switch Edition, has it so that defeated enemies can become souls that help you along your journey. In regards to putting those characters and their concepts together, I imagine the game would want to go into new directions, but there's plenty of possibility either way. And other characters could perhaps be Ravio, maybe just because he's a little Link to the Pasty with the Between Worlds thing, or we could even end up playing as the bad guy Ganon or the uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer villain. Ugh probably less likely, but you know, there's room for doing that kind of play as the bad guy style. There are even gameplay types that are designed to be extra hard or against you, so maybe they could control that kind of gameplay element. But before I go all crazy on all the things they could put but might have already not chosen to do, here's the things we have seen so far that go towards the Zelda games. We've seen Link using a bow and arrow, we've seen Zelda using a spear, Link has had both a normal sword and a master sword, we've seen iron boots in one of the shopkeeper's shops, Zelda has some kind of magic attack here that I probably should be able to name but I can't, and we've also seen Zelda use Nehru's love, one of the spiritual powers of wisdom that we see Zelda characters use. Since this one is the power of wisdom, there's a good chance we'll see one of courage for Link, and one of power from someone else, maybe Cadence. Either way, we could see something like Din's Fire, or the other one that I should have researched. Did all this research, I didn't research that piece, but no, you know what I mean, there's a lot of room for that. But other Link to the Past items specifically we could see, 
most likely will, would be the hook shot, who could perhaps make you move multiple tiles over, or it could make you actually cross over arenas, over, over abysses. I, I can't explain this very well. Crypt and the Necrodancer took place in crypts. It was underground. The sort of story here is that Cadence of Hyrule is a direct sequel, and it's Cadence coming out of the crypt and finding herself in another world, since she's been summoned or beckoned or whatever. So because it's more overworld, or if there are overworld elements, it could be very possible that there's places you can jump over rather than bottomless pits that don't make sense in the underground. Maybe it's a body of water. It, it, there's all sorts of possibilities there, really. There's also the Pegasus boots from Link to the Past, usually giving you speed boosts. It could do the same in this game, either increasing your beats per movement, motion, you know what I mean. It could make you crash into walls to unlock certain items or moving things, or it could even give you a dash attack. In the games, you do hold out your sword and dash forward, so maybe it does the same thing there. Um, another thing there is, although not necessarily an item, but it is a thing, is Link turns into a pink rabbit sometimes when he goes into the dark world. There is an item that I'll talk about later on that does transform you into another creature to be weak, Maybe that's a thing. Maybe they're a character. Play as Pink Rabbit Link, where you can't do anything. I don't know. Well, there's a lot of opportunities. Other items that are very specific to Link to the Past, I, I think. I could be wrong on that still. But there's the Book of Mudora, which is used for decrypting old Hylian language. I don't know entirely where this could be useful. Maybe it is opening more pathways. It certainly seems like an item you can just sort of pick up. But the idea of decrypting something seems awfully fitting for a crypt of the Necrodancer kind of game, don't you think? There's also the Magic Mirror that teleports Link to the Light World or to a dungeon entrance. This could just be used as some sort of teleporting mechanic. Maybe, I don't know, it, it just teleports you somewhere or allows you to teleport, teleport enemies that come in contact with you. Something like that. There's the Moon Pearl, which gives you immunity to the Dark World effects, assuming that sort of element will even appear in this game. Or it could just be some sort of general boost, making you more... Uh, armored against spell type moves. And then there's also the silver arrows, working similarly to the light arrows, but they cause actual damage to evil rather than just stunning it. It is actually interesting, maybe they can be combined with the bow and arrow. There's different bows and arrows with different, specifically, arrows. Maybe there will be light arrows in this game. Or you could get fire arrows to either use for puzzles or to do certain attacks to certain enemies. For other items, this is going to be my major list. There's all sorts of things from both Zelda games and Crypt games that could come together here that I'm just excited to possibly see. The Crypt of the Necrodancer games really like their shovels. You use it to dig through certain types of blocks to find more of the realm which could be an element, I guess, in the dungeons, not so much the overworld, we'll have to see. But uh, the only Zelda um, connection I could really find there was the Digger Claws from Skyward Sword. I'm less convinced that there will be many items from other Zelda games, maybe like remnants of it, but we can still talk about it anyway. There's a billion blade weapons that the game likes to go into. Uh, we've already seen the Normal Sword and the Master Sword and the Spear. Uh, there could be a rapier from Zelda. She has used that in Hyrule Warriors, and though that's not necessarily canon, it could give her more variety. There's a lot of daggers and broadswords and such like that, which we could actually still see in working mostly the same way if we had like some sort of big interspecies character. I mean, yeah, why, why not? Why did I stop at all the humans? There could be like we see Zoras as well, though they don't look the prettiest in this game. Um, I don't think we. If there are Gorons in this world, you can go for Gorons as well. Yeah, that'd be interesting, yeah. Forget forget Hylians, go to all other sorts of species for characters. There is also a whip in the Crypt games that does a direct, like, vertical damage. They all have different ranges and attack different tiles, which is helpful. Again, the whip I can only remember is Skyward Sword, but there could be some other item like that that does vertical attacks. Or perhaps that'll end up being the Fire Rod that Zelda could use. Another kind of notable crypt item I did see was the Blunderbuss, which has a giant range of spreading in a triangle form, like a what you'd expect a shotgun to do, sort of spreading all towards the tiles in front of you. And I was thinking, what weapon could possibly fit into that? Because I'm not sure if they want to give a gun to Link. They've done enough with Kirby. But that could potentially be the opening for Din's fire. It was just a little thought there. I'm almost certain we'll see it in some form though. Another weapon, though certainly not a good one, is the flower, which causes confusion to enemies but no damage. I could definitely see something like this coming up. Whether they choose to use a flower or not, they could end up using the Deku Nut instead, like flashing down onto the ground to stun your enemies for a moment. 
Or similarly, you could use the Deku Leaf, blowing wind at them and giving a knockback to them. Perhaps this is for Pink Rabbit Link, for all we know. As for clothes, there's all sorts of different combinations you can use in this roguelike dungeon crawling game, as you'd expect. I don't actually have a lot of options. They could go with the Breath of the Wild approach and have all sorts of, like, Knight's Armor, Dark Armor, Heavy Armor, No Armor. Um, the only other ones I can really say that are noticeable are the hero's tunic. Um, well, that kind of covers that. There could also be, obviously, different shields. I expect we'll see all sorts of wooden ones, steel ones, and hyaline ones. And if they wanted to really go a little odd on it, whether it would actually affect your model, I doubt it would, but you never know, is a, a barrel from Wind Waker. It's a fun little extra one on the side. Just an idea for different armor types. There's not a lot of room that I can think of off the top of my head, but we'll go with it. Uh, another category for wearable items is headwear. This could go into more references if it really wanted to. Again, there's a billion helmets they could use from Breath of the Wild if they wanted to go with that. If they wanted to do a very direct reference to another Zelda game, they could do the Minish Cap. I have no idea what it would do, just talk your ear off I guess, but it's an idea. Um, a very iconic one from Crypt of the Necrodancer, I keep just saying Crypt, I hope that's alright, is the monocle, allowing you to see items or hidden spirits or something like that. That translates quite nicely with the Eye of Truth from Ocarina of Time or something similar, could work quite nicely. And another one that's maybe a bit more flat on the ground is the Hero's Hood as if that's not already attached to the tunic. It could just allow for extra damage if you're Link or something. For footwear, we have, of course, the Pegasus boots, as I mentioned earlier, or the winged boots from Ocarina of Time. Again, just making you walk over those kind of areas. There is the winged boots in the Crypt of the Necrodancer that lets you float in the air and makes you immune to traps on the ground. So it could just work there again with the Pegasus boots. There's also the lead boots, which could work the same as the iron boots, giving you immunity to ice and ooze. And perhaps if we have water, now that we're in the overworld, it could get you into the water. Or make you immune to wind attacks and knockback, which also makes more sense now that I think about it. There's also the Boots of Pain that hurt to equip you, but do extra damage. This, I was thinking, could be some sort of item like Ganon Boots, giving you evil boots from the evil Lord King, but working in that sense. There's also the Boots of Speed, which again can work as the Pegasus Boots, giving you two times movement speed. Another one that I could think of that I don't really know the effects of could just be Royal Boots for Zelda. I've mostly been thinking of items that work with Link's motif because he's in most of the Zelda games so it's kind of what you can go from, but Royal Boots is one I could think of for Zelda. I don't really know where any others, but hey, maybe you can give up some suggestions too. Now Crypt of the Necrodancer loves their torches, there's a giant page of all different types of torches. I couldn't really find much of a version for it, maybe, I don't know, put a Deku stick on fire, that's a torch but maybe they'll use the blue fire torch from Breath of the Wild. Um, there is elements of other games like the Sheikah items in the trailer glowing blue like it's Breath of the Wild. So there may be some little nods here and there to give it a little bit of freedom and that could be one there. There's also rings, a lot of rings in this game and I thought what a nice way to nicely wrap up the Zelda game is having at least three different types of rings, the rings of courage, the rings of wisdom, and the rings of power. There is the rings of courage in the original game, giving you uh, added attack and you automatically move towards enemies that you kill. Um, there isn't a rings of wisdom, but I don't know what that could do, some sort of, I don't know, um, perception upgrade maybe. Uh, but the ring of power could work like the already existing rings of war. That gives you plus attack and plus knockback but it makes mini-bosses become their strongest form. So it's literally like, you are strong and so is everything else. Again, if you're playing as a Ganon-esque character, I think that could work really well, that you have to go through the biggest challenges, but you also are the biggest challenge. In The Link to the Past, there is actually the pendants of courage, wisdom, and power, so maybe they'll just be renamed to that, or they work differently like that. Maybe it's headgear you wear. I know it's around your neck, but you know what I mean. There's also many and many and many a spells in Crypt of the Neko Dancer. You've already got fire and freezing, healing and bombs, which is pretty in your face zelda -y. I don't know if it's inspirations, but you know. Maybe in this one you could upgrade your bombs to different types of bombs that we've seen in the past with Zelda. There is already the apparent shield, which could appear for Zelda, much like the reflective nature of what we see in the trailer. Um, and there's also transform. This is that move I was talking about earlier. In the game you can transform into a bat and you can like, I think it's about scouting around, like you can't do damage, 
and you lose your beat if you hit a wall, but you can just fly around as a bat and you're immune to traps. Maybe in this game it could do the same thing, where you that could be where you turn into Pink Rabbit Link, or if you wanted to go to another Zelda game, you could turn into a wolf to have some extra effects. Or maybe more generically, you transform into a fairy. It's practically the same as a bat. You're floating, you're small, you can't do much damage, and you go along. Um, other spell ideas, though very basic in form. If they wanted to go a little Breath of the Wildy, they could go a little bit with stasis. We already see that uh, ice move in Breath of the Wild, and ice is in this game, so that's another alternative. More likely, and I think we've already seen elements of it, is electricity. We already seem to see some sort of puzzle element that asks for electricity so it would work there. It also shows wind, or at least there's big fans, so wind could be another kind of spell you could use, or maybe it works with a deco leaf or something, which was actually my final one. Yeah, leaf slash wind spells. Very remnant to how Zelda spells work. Kind of. There's also familiars. Uh, the Again, the only ones I can really think of is fairy familiars or wolf familiars that help you on your journey. Other than that, that's the majority of what I had to kind of say. There's a lot of room for items and things. I haven't even got into music, and I could do, but I feel like people have already sort of talked about that. That's the kind of main part of the game. But with DLC op opportunities, you can go in all sorts of directions, really. Maybe it would want to lean more to another game, most likely like Minish Cap, since it's already kind of pixel arty. I don't know. But... I would be very excited to see what they come up with. There's, I mean, the Zelda series is gigantic. It's over 30 years old. It could go in so many different directions. And like, I'm just excited to see what they possibly come out with. I mean, we've already seen all sorts of um, Zelda enemies show up, like Beemos and Armos Knights, uh, Lynels, Dark Nuts, Bacoblins, Choo Choo's, Levers, like likes, you know, we've seen them all before. And now in this game, all pixelated, which is great. We've also seen, actually, what seems to be, in the trailer, environmental elements. Like, there's a boulder that Cadence is pushing at one point, there's music notes on the ground, and these gear guys, and there's that electric-based puzzle. So, maybe this will be more strategic and puzzly, which I'm excited to see a lot. Maybe I'll discuss closer to time with another trailer extra puzzle ideas, but we'll see. Either way, I am super excited for all sorts of possibilities that Cadence of Hyrule can bring. I love seeing Zelda in all sorts of different genres, and I love that it's a rhythm-based game. I've wanted to play one for a long time, and I'm just, I'm just excited. It's why I'm talking about it now. And maybe, who knows, maybe we'll get a DDR pad for this game. That is what the original game had, so I want my DDR Nintendo Switch functionality game, please. Thank you very much. But no, that is all that I mostly had to say to ramble on. I could talk about all sorts of other Zelda games, but I tried to keep it a little more grounded. What are your thoughts for Cadence of Hyrule now that it's about to be the four year anniversary? Have you got any other ideas of what elements they could put together or what you expect to see? What characters could maybe fit in a bit better? Because, I don't know, maybe you don't want the idea of Impa showing up, but you really like Ravio or Sahasrala. We'll see. This is also an attempt of a potentially new series that's a lot more casual, it's already unscripted if you couldn't tell. It's just like a weekly discussions video about current things. I forgot that I wanted to talk about Cadence of Hyrule ages ago anyway. So this is my opportunity to just sort of have a nice, happy, fanly rant about different discussion ideas of what could happen for Cadence of Hyrule, because it's the current one that I am most excited about right now. And also actually, the original game had all sorts of, you could put your own MP3s into it, so... I doubt they'll do that again, but like maybe you can import other Zelda songs? I guess that's what they would do in the main game. So they probably won't do that, but yeah, I just had a lot of things I wanted to say about this game. I'm excited for it, and I hope you are too, because it looks damn good. Come on, <laughs> look at it. But no, that's probably all I should say for now. I, I should probably calm down a little bit, but no. Super excited for this game. Tell me what your thoughts are on the game and maybe doing this every week, probably on a Friday and the main games, main videos on a Monday, I might swap them over, uh, just so then if a new Nintendo Direct pops up on a Thursday, I can talk about it the very next day. But we'll see, alright? Thank you for joining me on this little rambly thing, do be sure to have a discussion in the comments, I'll be down there a lot because this is a more speculative thing. But I'm gonna stop now. Oh, maybe as I do this series I'll get better at uh, stopping these videos. Anyway. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, follow me on all of these things please, you know the drill. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Whew.